I'm curious and based on that and in, in your experience, you know, managing so many projects and purchasing and, and managing uh, other people's uh, multifamily as well. What do you feel like today is your ideal deal? Like what, where do you think the, the biggest opportunity is right now? Yeah. So obviously right now, interest rates are interesting. Uh, yeah. We've, we've been unfortunately finding a lot of deals that just don't pan out, but we're starting to see, I'm going to say within the last two months or so, more opportunities coming up with people who are in situations where they have to sell. Maybe they had an adjustable rate loan and that's starting to get in front of them. Um, so I would say that being plugged into your various markets that you're interested in and looking for those opportunities where for one reason or another, someone has to sell, those seem to be coming up more and more frequently. So, and I, we personally feel like that's going to continue happening over the course of the next, you know, six months or so as, as this, you know, transition with the interest rates keep, keep uh, uh, progressing. Uh, Hopefully interest rates start coming down here shortly and, you know, maybe start taking a little bit of pressure off some people, but uh, but yeah, we, we think there's quite a few opportunities that are coming down the pike that is, are being generated because of this. And if you're not in the market, if you're not actively seeking this and actively trying to reach out to people, you'll never hear about any of these things and the opportunity will pass you by. Got it. Yeah. And, and do you do you see that as being a systemic issue with the with commercial real estate in general, like between the interest rates and the banking environment? Do you do you feel like you know it's sort of like going to um, snowball from you see a few people that have to sell to more and more to where it's like an avalanche of of sellers because um, you know interest rates are higher than cap rates in in yeah. a lot of markets and that sort of thing. So I would say that that depends on how long this interest rate, high high interest rate environment continues on. Um, there's there's rumors that supposedly maybe the next uh, interest rate might be uh, or interest rate meeting might be lowering the interest rates. So you know, obviously that's a sign that things will start coming down and taking a lot of that pressure off. But it's really about the runway, right? How how much runway, how long can someone afford to support a property? Are they in a position to be able to support that property? Or are they were they kind of out in front of that project or the 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 interest rates have have run away from them where they're not able to afford that particular project? Obviously, those types of situations, the longer this goes, the more and more of them are going to keep popping up. Um, you know, and then there's the other uncertainty too of just the markets in general, right? You know, the the uncertainty with the banks and you know, the more the more turmoil that's created there, the more apprehensive people are going to be to invest into these different opportunities, which again, sometimes people have to sell and um you know, they can't find the people to be able to help float loans to them or, you know, it all kind of, it, it all works together and all fits together. So, I mean, to answer your question, I guess it just depends on how long we're in this inflated environment is, mm. is really what it would all come down to. Yeah. And, and based on the uncertainty in the environment, are, how how are you purchasing properties today? Like, how do you underwrite them and... um you know, what makes you feel comfortable buying a deal? Yeah. So again, we're starting to leverage the relationships that we've built over the last three, four years, more now than ever. So we actually have a bank that took the property back through foreclosure maybe a month ago or so, and they want us to, to, to purchase it. So mm. uh, essentially, you know, that's a true <clears throat> off-market deal that we're basically buying at foreclosure. Um, we've got some other opportunities where, again, just people know people who have connected us together with other other owners that are interested in, in selling. So we're really being very, very selective with the types of opportunities that we're going with. Most of the time, those opportunities are not with brokers right okay. now. 
again, a few years ago, and maybe this is just because we've progressed a little bit more, but a few years ago, you know, we, we very, very, very rarely ever had direct contact with the bank or, uh, or the, the, the seller themselves. And now we're being able to be presented with those types of opportunities. So I, I would say we, we take the things more seriously when they are direct to the owner rather than going through the broker. Um, we're also obviously factoring in higher interest rates and, um, you know, even, even when we're factoring in the, the refis or the sales, you know, not going down to the, the cap rates that we were using a year ago, even, uh, being a little bit more conservative with those cap rates with what we can get, get out of the, the property. Right. So, yeah. um, you know, just, just adding more conservatism to it. And, and if the project works at that point, then, you know, then we basically pull the trigger on and moving forward with that one. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And that makes sense. Um, yeah, I can imagine it's, it's harder to find sellers that can be in a position if you're underwriting it at higher cap rates and higher interest rates and even, you know, rents I've, I know in some markets have started to dip a bit. Um, so, I, you know, um, I'm sure it can be a challenge. So finding those off-market deals um, and going direct to seller probably makes a huge difference. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, and can you cut? Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say it. You know, also makes a difference too where the where the property is also located at. Obviously, mm -hmm. if you have a an area that's very very popular and people are clamoring to get into that area, we've got properties in those areas which are a lot easier to be able to lease them out fully rather than other areas that may not be as desirable, um, yeah. you know, just from a geographic standpoint. So again, focusing in on those hot areas, unless you can find an amazing deal in some of those other areas, you know, you may have that, that rental issue where there's not enough volume to be able to fill your, fill your vacant units. Got it. Okay. Can, can you kind of describe a, a recent deal? Like just to give a picture for for listeners of what that looks like, like where it was, what, how many units it was, and then, you know, how you bought it and financed it. Yep. So we, this was last year. Uh, we, this is in Riverdale, Georgia, which is a suburb of Atlanta. Of Atlanta. Uh, this was 92 units and the property was 11 buildings. And mm. the, the property is quite large, right? So there's a lot of grass area, nice, nice property, nice and deep. But it was known as not being a desirable place to live at all. There was, um, you know, a lot of illegal activity and all of that. Which, interestingly enough, this particular property is literally right across the street from the middle school and the elementary school. Huh. So we came in and right away, curb appeal was number one. We had to get the curb appeal going. We started painting all the brick buildings. Uh, you know, fixing any you know, any doors, windows that might've been broken on the, the front facing ones, and then, you know, progressed on back through the rest of the property. Um, really, really, really made that place pop, uh, did some other things with some wood trim and all of that to make it look much, much more modern, uh, in interior, there were two buildings that were completely down and we're actually still waiting on the certificate of occupancy, which fingers crossed should be uh, available to us any day now. Um, but we had to go through and do extensive renovation in a couple of the buildings. You know, we updated fully, you know, new flooring, new carpet, new cabinets, uh, countertops, new furnaces in most cases, um, really put all of the, the this property back together. So now it's an incredibly, incredibly desirable place to live. And what we did not expect was because it was literally right across the street from the elementary and middle school, the entire city drives by that property every morning, dropping off their kids. Yeah. So we have not done one, we have not spent $1 on marketing and we have a waiting list. There's like 20 people mm. on the waiting list right now. So basically <laughs> as soon as we have the homes available, we, you know, they're, they're leased. Right, so that was a really unexpected bonus to this particular property, um, but uh, but that was just you know through through a uh, we partnered with another group who uh, 
basically as a lender and you know they they worked to loan us the the capital that we needed for the property and then we had our pool of investors that we collected the uh, the equity from and that's pretty well how we how we did that one nice and what would you buy it for that one was i think it was 9.2 if i remember correctly and we'll be refinancing it here we're we're exploring the options right now so um we'll be refinancing it here in the next uh, 60 to 90 days. So, nice. And, yeah. and what do you anticipate it appraising for now that it's uh, all prob- turned around? Probably about 15 or so. Wow. Yeah. So we we did really, really well with, again, being able to raise the rents. Um, and again, the, the, the transformation just from the aesthetics of the property is just incredible. It really, yeah. really looks great. That's amazing. I'm sure everyone appreciates all the work you did too. Yeah, especially yeah, sending absolutely. their kids to school that's, there. That 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 was the one thing too that we really focused in on was we knew that this place should be someplace where you know a family could live. Mm-hmm. You know, young younger kids. You know, maybe it's a single parent. Um, so we we put in a park. We put in. I don't know if you've ever seen like the the wooden exercise things. Oh, we've yeah. got some of those things, you know, for exterior use. We've got grills. There's a dog park that we put in, um, uh, playground. So we really tried to attract, you know, the that family atmosphere, the the uh, family client to be able to enjoy the space. So yeah. and again, in large properties, so it's kind of like a park like setting as well. Cool. And how much did it cost you to do all those upgrades? Uh, we put we put about three. I, th- I think it was three point four million into it. Okay, so, so yeah, so a big big project. So you put three point four in, but you created about six million total of value. You know, out of that three point three point four million. So that's yep. yeah, yeah, that's it's, incredible. It, 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 yeah, it worked uh, worked out well. So and again, that was a relationship that we had through one of the brokers. That w- that was one of the last ones that we. Uh, that we bought directly off a broker, but that was off market. You know, they didn't, they didn't advertise that out to everyone. So yeah. Um, yeah. That's cool. That's so that's kind of like the model multifamily property that value add type deal that, you know, is a hundred around a hundred units to where the economies of scale makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, that's fantastic. Mm-hmm.